So, in this video, <laughs> it's so hard to talk about this stuff, and I guess for a lot of people it's really hard to hear about it too. But this video actually belongs at the end of the series on emptiness, and uh, because it's the final culmination of all the techniques that the Buddha reveals in the Chula Shunyata Sutta. So, this is basically the culmination of the eight jhanas. There are four worldly jhanas, and then there are four jhanas beyond the world. So we're going to talk about what's beyond that. <laughs> Now, where did I get this? <laughs> oh, boy. First of all, I got the clue from a very experienced meditation teacher, a monk in Sri Lanka. And that would be about 2015, 2016. And so I've been practicing it ever since. And of course, I've added my own wrinkles, you know. <laughs> <laughs> my own elaborations to the process. But basically what it is, is a way to reliably attain nirvana or nibbana. And the Buddha, at the end of the Chula Shunyata Sutta, uh, he talks about themeless concentration, where the mind, the consciousness, the attention, the awareness is concentrated without any content, without any um, strategy, or without any uh, particular content. So I'm going to assume that you've seen all the other videos in the Emptiness series. And I'm going to go on from there to this particular technique, which I don't even know if it has a name. Oh, and I should mention how I came to make this video. So I've been practicing this technique since like 2015, 2016, early 2016. And why haven't I talked about it up until now? Well, the reason is <laughs> that the result of this technique is to go into samadhi that is so deep, so profound, that when you come out of it, your mind is completely refreshed. It's like hitting the reset button, you know? <laughs> Beep. <laughs> Memory is wiped. Everything starts all over again. So if you wonder why, when you see me in these videos, I often look so refreshed, you know, even at my age. And I'm in such a good mood. <laughs> this has a lot to do with it. But the point is, when I come out of that samadhi, which usually winds up in deep, deep sleep, uh -huh, I don't remember the technique anymore. It's gone. <laughs> so it just so happened that today I had a guest for lunch. And after entertaining my guest and cleaning up a little bit and doing some work and, you know, just laying around <laughs> on a hot, uh, sultry afternoon in India, I took a nap. And I took my nap kind of later than I usually do. But of course, I use this technique without even thinking about it. At this point, it's so, you know, so much a part of who I am that it really doesn't take any separate effort. Uh, 
It just kind of goes naturally, step by step. So we've made many videos about consciousness. And really, instead of going through the Buddha's jhana system, it's easier for me to present this in terms of the four levels of consciousness, jagrat, svapna, sushupti, and turiya. So what happens when we go to sleep? First of all, we're in jagrat consciousness. We're aware of the body and so many objects and sense perceptions and stuff and thoughts and thoughts about thoughts, <laughs> isn't it? That's jagrat. Jagrat means many things. And then we go from there into svapna, which means dreams. Now, in undeveloped people, patujanas, there is like a curtain, like a veil between jagrat and svapna. They're, they're very much separated, which is why a lot of people have trouble falling asleep. Especially they become uh, hooked on all of these thoughts going around in their mind and they never take control of them. So it's hard for them to let go of that and just relax into dreams. Or they may have some emotional disturbance and their dreams aren't healthy. They're not pleasant. So they were actually afraid to go into their dreams. But in a normal, healthy person, dreams are pleasant. And in a developed person with developed consciousness, they have the ability to dream consciously. Well, actually, we all dream consciously when we daydream. When we think about things, usually pleasant things that we like, or that we would like to do, or places we'd like to go, and so on. That is daydreaming. We have a dream while we're awake during Jagrat. So in the same way, we can go into Svapna, we can go to sleep with a controlled dream, a lucid dream. And this dream, you know, if you look at our famous chart, <laughs> You see that bhakti yoga is on the level of svapna consciousness. Why is that? Because our relationship with God and the pastimes and the moods of that relationship are basically dreams. There's nothing wrong with this. There's certainly nothing wrong with admitting it. Huh? I know a lot of people would be upset that, no, our relationship with God is the absolute. You know, well, it's not really. Because it begins at a certain point in time, and therefore it also ends at a certain point in time. What are those? When we start to develop our devotion, when we start to develop our devotional service and our mood towards the absolute, that's the beginning of the dream of bhakti. And we dream that we have a relationship with God in a certain form and in a certain mood, and that we have pastimes with this form of God. And then slowly, slowly, this develops into prema, which is extreme ecstasy. And this can also go all the way to self-realization. When one realizes, oh, actually, this God is a phenomenon within myself, within my mind. Therefore, I and God are one. We just did a video about one of the namas in Sri Lalita Sahasranam that describes this process. So this is the pinnacle of bhakti, and after that, naturally comes meditation. So meditation is in the realm of sushupti, or deep sleep consciousness. So anyway, the technique is that from Jagrat, one picks up this dream of bhakti, whatever your dream is. Huh? Mine is, I'm riding my lion, and we're going off into space. 
<laughs> We're heading for mother, Mother's Planet, Divine Mother. And maybe we arrive there and we have all kinds of really cool pastimes there. So whatever your dream is, whatever your bhakti is, uh, you consciously enter that state. And this will take you across the transition from Jagrat to Svapna without losing consciousness. So this is very important because it's the entry into lucid dreaming. I usually play my mantra in the background, loop it, you know, so that my mantra help, help me establish my mood and so on. And so I just go right into that. And my body is asleep, but my mind is active and I'm awake. So then comes the entry into nothingness or emptiness, sushupti consciousness. And this is the real aim of all forms of meditation, to completely still the mind, to completely stop thought, stop the endless flow of perceptions and desires and so on. Now you can't do this by force. Huh? It's not possible because try, well, just try it for a few minutes, huh? Just try and stop the mind. See how far you get. <laughs> the mind is much stronger than we are. It's a, like a force of nature. So we can't stop the mind by force. It's not possible. And all of the yoga systems that try to do so are simply to bring you to the point where you realize it's impossible. You can't stop the mind by force. Well then, What's the secret? And of course, the secret is absorption in God, absorption in the deity, oneness. And of course, in oneness, there's no two. There's only one. So there's nothing to perceive, nothing to experience, nowhere to go, nothing to be, <laughs> nothing to have, nothing to do. This is emptiness. This is sunyata, sushupti. So now in the upper end of emptiness is a state, a very special state called neither perception nor non-perception. In sunyata, in sushupti consciousness, there's no object. So you can't know whether you're perceiving or you're not perceiving, huh? I mean, certainly there's nothing to perceive, then there's no perceptions. But you could be still perceiving and only just perceiving nothing. <laughs> so it's a kind of a weird state, neither perception nor non-perception. And this is the state that's right next door to Nirvana, Nibbana. So my friend, the monk, described it this way. He said, you go up through the jhanas, or you go up through these four states of consciousness until you reach the complete emptiness. And you try to do it fast so that you acquire some momentum, he said. Huh? Of course, this takes a long practice and training. The first time going up through these states might take you years. But you have to get it down. You have to practice it to the point where it just takes a few minutes, like half an hour maybe at the most. So then you acquire this momentum going up through the jhanas or through the states of consciousness. And then, he said, you jump. Now, the interesting thing about jumping is that in that state, especially, there's nothing to jump into or onto or off of. <laughs> there is, however, one support. There is the support of the mind. Uh, but Nibbana has no support. The Buddha says so in numerous suttas. 
And that's my experience also. There is no support. There is no framework. There is no script, no play, nothing happening, nothing going on. Huh? It's just like you're falling endlessly through space. No worries, because you can't hit anything. <laughs> There's nothing to hit in that consciousness. So this is the prescription. This is the method. This is an absolutely reliable method in my experience for entering Nibbana. Because in that state, there's no perception. There's no non-perception. There's no thoughts, no actions, no desires, no nothing. Huh? It's extremely pleasant. I, I can't describe how wonderful and beautiful that state is. One time, Ananda and a couple of other senior monks went to Subhuti and they asked him, uh, Venerable Subhuti, what is so great about Nibbana? And he replied, in Nibbana, nothing is felt. And they said, well, how can that be wonderful? How can that be pleasant? And he said, that is precisely what is pleasant about Nibbana, is that nothing is felt. There's no disturbance whatsoever, not even the possibility of any disturbance. And this, I can say, speaking from experience, is the highest and most pleasant state of all. And it doesn't require anything outside your own consciousness. Aung Tatsat Aung Shakti Aung